You ready, Grace? Yes, I am. Okay. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to introduce you. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. This is the Illuminate Speaker Series uh, for the College of Rehabilitation Sciences. And so we're very fortunate today to have our presenter, and I want to tell you a little bit about her. So Dr. Grace Vincent Onibajo is a registered physiotherapist with the Medical Rehabilitation Therapist Board of Nigeria. She holds a PhD in neurophys neurological physiotherapy from the University of Ibadan, the premier university in Nigeria. And she was an associate professor teaching undergraduate and graduate courses for about a decade at the Department of Medical Rehabilitation in the Department of Physical Therapy in the University of Madiguri, where she also served as the head of the department for several years. Dr. Vincent Onabajo has supervised over 35 research dissertations. She has 42 publications in the field of neurological physiotherapy, and her research focuses on the analysis of stroke aftermath using the ICF, Disability and Health Scale, especially post-stroke social participation and return to work and leisure. Quality of life for stroke survivors and their caregivers, as well as physiotherapy education and training in Nigeria. Her current research interests include stroke rehabilitation and outcomes in women, especially those of childbearing age. Dr. Vincent Onabagio serves as a an external examiner for doctoral examinations and a reviewer for scholarly journal and WCPT congresses. So uh, we'll let you take it from here, Grace. And um, just to let you know also that there's people listening to the presentation live. It's being streamed. So just to let you know that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barbara Shea. Thank you for the invite. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'll be talking on the outcomes and competences of, rehab of pregnancy and proprium rehabilitation related stroke rehabilitation. Um, the core of this presentation is about the data. It is so obvious that there is a dearth of data regarding this very important aspect of stroke rehabilitation. And as we know, if any aspect of rehabilitation is not so well taken care of, then the clients and the patients, their caregivers, the family will um, be at the receiving end. So this presentation is to take a look at the available data regarding rehabilitation outcomes and competences for p women who suffer stroke during pregnancy or postpartum. So I'll go straight to the presentation. So a bit of a background here, uh, stroke in pregnancy and porperium, it's rare, that's a known fact, but the incidence is on the rise, it's on the increase, and there are so many, uh, there's uh, a, not, a lot of literature regarding this particular uh, condition in women. And regarding the incidence, the rise, the rise in incidence, we know that over the years, the incidence of stroke, the mortality from stroke, and also the uh, functional outcomes from stroke has been a focus of uh, several studies. But in women, the rise in incidence is particularly concerning. A study that was conducted at the United States uh, some years back compared the incidence of stroke in pregnancy at two different time points, the mid-90s and in the uh, mid-2000. And the increase was recorded, the increase in incidence was recorded to be 103%. That is a whooping increase, uh, a whooping um, uh, amount of increase in incidence. There are so many factors that could be responsible. Uh, some of the authors believe that 
probably lifestyle factors, increase in uh, pregnancy-related hypertensive disorders, and all of that could be responsible. But uh, the the actual cause for the rise or the increase in incidence cannot be ascertained at this time. It's also important to mention that stroke in pregnancy and puerperium is an important cause of maternal morbidity, mortality, and fetal. Of course, studies have shown that many, in many cases of uh, stroke in pregnancy, the outcomes could be very there depending on the type of stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke in particular has a uh, record of high mortality rate. And then the management of this particular condition needs to be individualized. Because as I go on in the presentation, I will show you how diverse the risk factors are, the causative factors are, the presentations are. So that would uh, require individualized management because it has to be tailored to the need of each uh, patient. And as I said earlier, the devastating effect of stroke in pregnancy is profound on the mother, on the baby, on the family. Yes, stroke is a life-changing condition, but in pregnancy, it is much more. Because pregnancy and motherhood on its own is life changing. I mean, changes to the physiology, changes in the body, the excitement that comes with being pregnant and expecting a new member of a family is, and then when the baby comes, all of those are life changing. But to now have a stroke in the mix can really be devastating. And uh, there are there are several instances where people that have gone through this experience have told their stories and those stories are quite touching and one can just imagine how they feel, the family, the, the mother, the partner and all those involved. So it is a very serious issue that needs to be tackled with all empathy and concern as rehabilitation professionals. And I'd like to mention here, just for the sake of, uh, to, to, to define my terms, the puerperium is six weeks from the time of delivery of a baby. And then, of course, we know stroke as, uh, as it affects the cerebral function, focal or global disturbance of cerebral function lasting more than 24 hours or leading to death. So it's important to put those in context. So the big picture, Beyond the pregnant woman, stroke in women is a, an issue that deserves appropriate attention. I have some points here that really drives home the, 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 the enormity of the problem in women. The Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada puts it as the number one cause of premature death in women in Canada. It's also the third leading cause of death for women in the U.S., and beyond the high figures, the prevalence in women is higher than in men. And unfortunately, despite this burden of stroke in women, the emphasis in research, the emphasis in uh, care has not been so much on the women. In fact, there are, uh, there are available data that show that there is an underrepresentation usually of women when it comes to clinical trials for stroke, when it comes to uh, interventions that should assist uh, access to healthcare. Like in my country, in Nigeria, access to healthcare for women, it's, uh, th there's a bit of imbalance, there's a bit of uh, inequality. And to look at the, the burden of stroke in women, one would have expected that the focus of all that is needed to restore function, to improve quality of life, would be targeted at th this particular vulnerable group. But it's unfortunate to admit 
that that is not the case. Also, when it comes to outcomes, the aftermath of stroke, more women are disabled. There are so many studies that have proven that. And I'm going to show some of my own studies too, that uh, even in my environment here, that, are, that, that attest to the fact that women are at, the, uh, at a disadvantage when it comes to the stroke aftermath. And lastly, it is quite um, disheartening to note that with the burden of stroke in women, the first ever prevention guideline for, for stroke that, he, that was dedicated solely for the uh, women was published only in 2014. So all of these years, there was nothing to fall back on except to uh, obtain some information from general guidelines. And as I said, because of the underrepresentation of women in clinical trials for stroke, then the, 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 the major issues that concern women were, were not really uh, elucidated in those guidelines. But thankfully, it's better late than never. Now we have a guideline, though for prevention, uh, for stroke in women generally. So this is one of my studies. Uh, this was one of the publications from my doctoral uh, research and we looked at gender differences in longitudinal patterns of functioning among Nigerian stroke survivors. The study itself was not was a longitudinal study, a 12 month long, longitudinal study to look at motor performance, activity, participation and quality of life for stroke over a period of 12 months. <coughs> Pardon me. But Part of the data extracted, we now decided to look at the pattern, comparing it between male and female because of the what we have observed to be the situation in clinical practice, in research, where women are underserved and underrepresented. So we looked at this as uh, like a secondary analysis of the data obtained. And from this chart, you can see this motor performance was assessed with the Fugomeya scale and higher score depicts better function, better motor performance. So from the first to the 12th month, yes, there's improvement in the, uh, among the female stroke survivors, but you can see that from the outset, from the baseline, the motor performance of the male was uh, much better and their improvement. Yes, the women improved, but they did not catch up, at least based on the scores presented. In this study, we didn't find a significant difference in terms of the p-value, and that was due to a limitation we observed. The sample size was didn't power that, but the scores, merely looking at this chart, shows that the uh, the difference, I mean, the multiple performance in women cannot be compared from baseline to the end. Also, we looked at activity. We measured that with the functional independence measure. This is a bit close, uh, but there are, there are many reasons for that. Probably some of the chores uh, that the men engage in like uh, um, uh, more, more of the activities of daily living of course you know there can be compensation and it doesn't really reflect actual recovery not all the time actual recovery of motor function it could be by compensation but there's still a bit of uh, difference in the pattern across the years a recent study that we did that was published in the Journal of Stroke and Cerebrovascular Disease in, the, in 2018. We also looked at balance, balance function, and compared male female. And that study there was a significant difference in the balance function or balance recovery of males. They did better 
and the odds ratio was uh, about 1.6 which is uh, uh, the the, uh, the male stroke survivors have uh, at least what, over one uh, time uh, they, they, they are more ab are able to recover their balance function than the female so this is just a, the big picture male female but the topic is on pregnancy and I'm back on that regarding what we know because this topic is daily, is solely looking at the death in data and the death is appreciable more in rehabilitation uh, 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 for rehabilitation as a field as a specialty in stroke uh, care so but before we go into where or what is missing in data in literature I just put this up to let us know what is known several studies have been conducted to let us know the risk factors for uh, pregnancy related stroke and uh, we have some pregnancy related factors and the traditional risk factors of course the traditional risk factors pregnant or not this could result in a, this puts an individual at risk of stroke but the pregnancy related factors are specific they are specific uh, they occur they, they, they are complications as it were complications of pregnancy so this is known also etiological factors several studies review studies uh, systematic reviews uh, just plain literature reviews, retrospective studies, case series, prospective studies, a number of studies have been done to actually see which factors are responsible, which factors lead to or cause uh, pregnancy related stroke or puerperium related stroke and uh, we have several of them that have been established in literature. Knowing that the, uh, the childbearing age, a woman in her childbearing age can be considered as a young adult and many of these factors, some of these factors, these etiological factors have also been found to be common in a uh, young adult except for those that are actually related to pregnancy like the amniotic fluid embolism the postpartum cerebral angiopathy those are unique for pregnancy but um, we uh, ruptured aneurysm arteriovenous malformation these are not so uh, they are not pregnancy specific they can uh, result in stroke in other non-pregnant people so the incidence is also known, as I said earlier, uh, it, this con uh, stroke in pregnancy is regarded as a rare condition, but as I said, the incidence is increasing and there is data to show. So I have country by country uh, data regarding the incidence. We have in Canada, in Japan. Some of these studies are nationwide studies. The Canada study was a unicenter study, was just done at a center. The Japan study was a nationwide study. Uh, the, USA, the USA study was a nationwide study. The UK study was nationwide. While the France study involved, it was a multi-center study. But in all, we can see uh, differences in the pattern. And some of these different, uh, uh, in the pattern of incidence could be due to the study design, could be due to some factors in some population i i'm not happy i can't present the incidence rate for my country here but unfortunately we don't have data to that effect but what is known here in nigeria is that we have a high incidence rate of uh, maternal mortality it's it's quite alarming and the government is actually working on how to address many of these uh causative factors a recent systematic review was done by uh, Rick Swartz, um, I think he's of uh, the University of Toronto, I'm not sure, but I know he's in Canada. That's the latest systematic review and meta-analysis. 
and um, that was a very elaborate study and they found that 30 in 100,000 pregnancies 30 cases of stroke related pregnant, uh, pregnant, uh, pregnancy uh, in stroke, I mean stroke in pregnancy occurred in 30 out of 100,000 pregnancy and I dare say every even one is quite significant so the numbers are not uh, good enough reasons for why we have limited data when it comes to rehabilitation of this very important population. We also know about acute management. I'll be showing you a recent uh, uh, practice guideline or consensus statement that was uh, that came out of Canada too regarding acute management. A lot of work is being done in Canada regarding this uh, pregnancy uh, related stroke and it's, uh, it's quite heartening to know that uh, in, uh, attention is being focused on it at least in recent times. This uh, consensus statement I mentioned about acute management uh, was published, I think, last year in the International Journal of Stroke. So one, one, one is uh, heartened, one is excited to know that gradually, slowly but surely, enough in interest is being generated and uh, enough work is being done in, uh, a lot of work rather, is being done regarding this uh, topic. Secondary prevention, there's also a, a statement, a consensus statement, also from Canada regarding secondary prevention. Of course, uh, where we come in as physiotherapists will be in the lifestyle intervention, weight control, regular exercise, women's health uh, physiotherapy uh, specialists will will be able to do a lot of that. Of course, they are always involved uh, when necessary in postpartum anti, uh, antenatal uh, care of pregnant women. So the weight control aspect and regular exercise is well within their purview. But generally for stroke in pregnancy, one, uh, one important uh, outcome that should be prevented is recurrence, stroke recurrence, secondary prevention of stroke. And so we know now from available data that there are pharmacologic interventions that are used, also lifestyle interventions similar, lifestyle interventions similar to what is advised for anybody that has suffered the stroke. Stop alcohol, stop smoking, exercise, control your weight, check your BMI, eat well, good balanced diet, and all of that. So, as I mentioned, there are practice guidelines. Uh, the Canadian Stroke Best Practice Statement for Acute Stroke Management, Best Practice Statement for Secondary Stroke uh, Prevention, and then the guideline I mentioned earlier, the 2014 guideline, that is generic. It's for women generally. But a good portion of that guideline was dedicated to pregnancy. Uh, so we have these guidelines. But looking at this slide, you can see there's, a, there's something, a major thing missing. And that is rehabilitation. There is no guideline. There is no consensus statement for rehabilitation of uh, pregnancy-related stroke survivors. So we have the first part, the hyperacute care, the acute care, and all of that. Secondary prevention, that's of course post-recovery and all. But what should be between the acute care and secondary pr stroke prevention, which ideally should be rehabilitation and all, without the data? Where is it? It appears not to be available. Also, what is known, we know about the mortality that occurs, the pattern differs depending on the type of stroke, ischemic, hemorrhagic, cerebral, venous thrombosis, the mortality rate differ, global disability, many of the studies that have reported global disability used the modified ranking scale just for global disability, and you would know that the modified rank ranking scale might not actually tap 
the major concerns of a woman, a pregnant woman or a postpartum woman who has suffered the stroke. Because if you look at the lower uh, uh, level of the MRS, it talks more about being able self-care, being able to care for yourself. But you know that, of course, a woman that has given birth to a baby, will, the care now is beyond just self-care. What about the baby? How is she able to take care of the baby, breastfeed the baby, bathe the baby? But unfortunately, the outcome measures used in many of the studies was just to assess global disability, all about the woman alone, nothing about the baby. Also, discharge destination, are they discharged to nursing home, are they discharged home, rehabilitation, inpatient rehabilitation, this has also been documented. Delivery outcome, was the delivery eventful? Was it uh, uh, was it complicated and all of that? Also, the form of delivery was was it SVD, spontaneous vaginal delivery, or did, did the, the woman require a cesarean section? Fetal outcomes, mortality, premature birth, uh, fetal distress. All of these outcomes have been recorded in many studies. I did a sample literature search in PubMed to look at the pattern of outcomes reported in the studies available, some of these studies using key term stroke in pregnancy, uh, the key, uh, search term stroke in pregnancy. And the focus was more on mortality as an outcome, followed by the discharge destination, followed by disability, and then the fetal outcome. And uh, the reason for the somewhat uh, lack of, or, well, not equal focus on disability is because many of those studies were not rehabilitation studies. They were studies, they were incident studies, they were studies that, retrospective studies that just looked at, okay, how many people had, how many women had stroke in pregnancy and what was the outcome. So it was not really, those studies were not designed specifically to look at uh, disability, which would have been the case if the studies were probably conducted by rehabilitation experts. So when you look at the outcome that I just presented, mortality, disability, uh, fetal outcome, and compared to this slide, this slide shows uh, the outcomes that women, this is as, as a result of a study that was conducted to check what outcomes are women concerned about following uh, pregnancy and delivery. This was a study, an international study by Nigal et al and it involved all continents except South America. And the study involved focus group discussion, uh, Delphi methods, just to arrive at the outcomes that should be assessed in pregnant women and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, in pregnant and postpartum uh, uh, women. And you can see that none of the major concerns of the women has been taken care of in the studies based on the last uh, slide I showed. M mortality, uh, dis uh, just global disability and all of that is not so much, uh, of course mortality will not be an issue in this case, but quality of life. The women, they would love to have their quality of life assessed based on this study. They would love to have their mental health assessed. They would love to have their incontinence assessed and addressed. Concerning their infants, how they can care for the, uh, the infant to create bond, how to breastfeed confidently and successfully. And also, they would love to be asked how satisfied they are with care and their experience with delivery. This study was done among pregnant and postpartum women generally, not uh, 
women that have suffered stroke. But it tells us, it, 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 it gives an insight into what really matters. And when we talk about client-centered care, it should be about the client, it should be about their perspective, it should be about what they are interested in, it should be what concerns them. But we can see that that is, has not been taken care of. Probably the rehabilitation professionals will be in a better situation to assess some of these factors that are uh, more that the uh, pregnant women and postpartum women are interested in. But unfortunately, the data is not available. So we've talked. Uh, uh, we've gone through the available data, which clearly uh, favour acute care, uh, acute management, uh, incidents, epidemiology, and uh, general outcomes. But when it comes to rehabilitation, the data is really not there. So, rehabilitation for stroke in pregnancy and the perpetuum should be evidence-based, as we know, should be value-based. At least the outcome, the effort put in uh, care should be justified by the outcome, it should be client-centered, it should be accessible. And using the ICF model, the International Classification of Functioning, Disability and Health, we know that many times when we are looking at the uh, effect or the impact of our rehabilitation as physiotherapists I, and even occupational therapists, we, we can use the ICF framework to actually analyze the effect of our care, also to assess at baseline and also for follow-up to see how well we have, uh, we have been able to achieve the goals, the collaborative goals set with the patient. So looking at body function structure, activity, participation and quality of life. Of course, we also, in rehabilitation research, we look at um, discharge destination, we look at length of hospital stay and similar uh, uh, service-related outcomes. But beyond that, the ICF provides us a good framework to look at uh, the, our outcomes and to also assess our clients prior to our intervention. So these are the rehabilitation outcomes I am asking in, my, in this paper that where, do, where, where, where is the data regarding how these outcomes uh, how, how, how we can access data on these outcomes when it comes to stroke in pregnancy. We know that the activity of a pregnant woman and a nursing mother will go beyond what we have in the battle index, will go beyond what we have in the MRS. The participation will go beyond what we have in our charts, what we have in our London Handicap Scale, because the Pregnancy and uh, postpartum experience is unique. It's quite uh, a unique experience, an exciting time. And so many of the generic or even stroke-specific outcome measures that are used for general uh, stroke, uh, generally for stroke survivors might not really tap the very uh, important constructs that affects uh, the pregnant woman or the postpartum woman. And then quality of life. We know that when all is said and done, the ultimate goal of rehabilitation is to enhance quality of life, to ensure that uh, our client uh, is satisfied with life and is able to live uh, as near normal as possible. So when we're talking about rehabilitation outcomes in stroke, in pregnant women and in the postpartum period, it is important that we are able to assess this and then address this with our, with our interventions. That must have, that is expected, we expect that that is what is going on, 
in our clinics, in our health, health, health facilities, but the data is not there. We don't know what is being done and we don't know what the outcome is. So I decided to do a PubMed search again using the PICO format, only that I did not have the comparison, uh, I did not input search terms for the comparison. I just used the P, the, the population of the problem, and then the intervention to see what is out there regarding stroke in pregnancy, what has been done regarding rehabilitation, and then the outcomes are using the ICF, of course. I looked at motor function, motor performance, activities of daily living, participation, quality of life to see if we have studies that have actually looked at this and what they found. These sad terms were, of course, the Boolean uh, uh, function was used to combine some of the search terms to be able to find out what we have in PubMed. Many of my searches came out with zero results. I have my computer screen filled with so many zero, zero results. Uh, my NCBI uh, page so many zero results because the data is just not there. These two studies were uh, some of the relevant search results returned. The first one was a study done in Malaysia and why I believe this study was found in my search was that it's a case report and the woman, the pregnant woman in question whose case was reported had undergone physical therapy prior to her going for this traditional Malay massage. The traditional Malay massage, based on the information in the study, has some spiritual components. It's a traditional uh, thing in Malaysia. And so the, 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 the patient in this case report had received physiotherapy, had uh, gone through the, all the conventional treatment, and then um, it was reported that her recovery was slow and then she went for the traditional Malay thing, uh, massage and uh, they reported the outcome. It is curious or it is interesting to note that while we have so many evidence-based um, outcome, I mean interventions that, that we use in stroke, case reports to show how such interventions were effective or the outcome of such interventions of women that have suffered a stroke in pregnancy and postpartum when such case reports were not were not found in fact the the, 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 the journal the journal for this study i mean this, the journal in which the study was published was actually a journal of complementary and alternative medicine so it just further shows that uh, there's a lot to be done in rehabilitation research to address this very important scarcity or dearth in information. Also, my search returned a retrospective study, and I, when I looked at the study, some of the keywords that probably made uh, the PubMed search to return this particular study as a result was that it talked about discharge destination for women that have suffered stroke in pregnancy and it looked at um, those that were discharged to, for inpatient rehabilitation, inpatient rehabilitation, those that were discharged home and uh, that continued with community rehabilitation. That was the only reason I believe this uh, study was uh, returned in the search. There was nothing about physiotherapy intervention in it. There was nothing to, to show up, uh, to, to indicate uh, what intensity, what frequency, what modality was used. It was just uh, the outcome in terms of discharge destination that made this study uh, to be returned. A third study was returned, but it was it's 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 a it's rather um, a, a, a worry a war a worrisome kind of 
uh, report, and that report was on how uh, it was a case report too, and it was on how a woman suffered stroke in pregnancy following cervical manipulation. That result was returned, but it doesn't fit into the topic, and it's even uh, a negative. The topic, uh, the, 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 the study was titled Stroke After Neck Manipulation in Postpartum Period. So that is not the positive outcome, and it's, that's not what we are after. We're looking at how, we have to, how rehabilitation specialists can actually assist, help women that have suffered stroke in pregnancy to recover function, to go back to their life. And it's also important to mention at this point that many of the time, uh, many of the studies we do, some of the studies I've done, return to work after stroke, return to leisure after stroke, might not, when we're thinking of planning uh, future studies that would address this death that I've uh, shown, such studies of returning to function might not be applicable because in some women, especially primary gravida, somebody that is just having a baby for the first time, it is not about returning now because the experience is a new experience. So it will be more like a habilitation kind of trying to teach how to do things that has never been done before. So that also is something that we should look at in uh, moving forward and planning how to um, address the death that we have identified. So. Remember, my topic is on outcome and competencies. The competencies for the rehabilitation specialists to actually address the problems that would arise from uh, stroke in pregnancy would require that such rehabilitation professionals will have advanced competencies. Core competencies, yes, collaboration, communication, uh, practice skills uh, and all the rest, scholarship. Yes, those are core competencies in physical therapy. But beyond that, when we look at stroke in pregnancy, what will what will be required will be specialist skills, knowledge, and uh, advanced attitudes and even experience, which comes. Of course, that would not be applicable for an entry to practice kind of uh, situation, it will mean that the, that the individual physiotherapist has been in practice. So with that, the data, what specific competences are needed for effective stroke rehabilitation? And how do we arrive? How do we know these competences? Of course, literature is replete with ways in which competency statements are arrived at. It will entail a very extensive literature search. It will entail focus groups. It will entail even having the clients and probably their caregivers to be involved, to let us know what their, the, the, what their goals are, what really concerns them concerning our rehabilitation. So where are, where's the data? What competencies should Rehabilitation specialists involved in stroke care for pregnant women, what competencies should they possess? We, it might just be, yes, an individual believes he has the competence, but there's nothing documented. And that will affect training, that will affect accreditation, that will affect even assessment and even self-reflection to know if we are doing the right thing. So we need data on the specific uh, competencies. Also, the rehabilitation needs. A lot of studies have been done all over the world about rehabilitation needs. But as has been the case, it's usually a global thing. Uh, generally, stroke survivors, maybe young age group or the older or in some specific locations. But there is no study, there's no available study looking at the specific rehabilitation needs of survivors of pregnancy or puerperium related stroke. We don't have that data. Then practice recommendations. 
the general practice recommendations we have for stroke, the one by Duncan PW, uh, the one we have in Canada, the ones I've shown earlier, that those ones were on acute care, those were, uh, and the other one on secondary pre uh, prevention, but there is no practice recommendation or even consensus statement to let us know, to guide. And we know that if we have such guidelines available, it will help in uh, knowing what competencies are required to be able to act, uh, manage successfully this unique group of uh, patients. And then what are the training needs of specialists involved in rehabilitation of survivors? We also need to have data regarding that because uh, a personal experience I had with a pregnant woman who had a stroke that was during my master's years at the University of Ibadan. I was actually a bit scared because I was not prepared to address such a problem. The woman in question had a stroke on the eighth day postpartum. In my country, the eighth day is the day we have what we call the naming ceremony, where we celebrate, call friends and families, we give the baby a new, uh, the names, and then um, it's always a big deal. But this woman in question had her stroke on that very day. So the trauma to the husband, the trauma to the family was immense. And then as a young graduate who I mean, was just in her a master's uh, program, when I was confronted with that case, I was scared. I was at a loss. I was careful with my choice of words. I knew the, 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 the environment was tense. The woman was always crying. I mean, everybody, the, the family members were there with her in the room in her room at the hospital, everybody was sad. So coming fresh and not knowing what to say in the, that, that, I mean, uh, how to communicate in a way that will not aggravate an already bad case or an, or an already bad situation was quite uh, concerning for me. And I can say that experience, that singular experience was what even stimulated my interest in this area. As uh, Dr. Barbara Shea read out when she was introducing me, this for me is a, new, uh, is, a, is, is a new area of interest. My previous studies have been generally on stroke, more on participation, return to work, leisure, quality of life, generally. But over time, I've come to realize that this particular group, as women that have suffered stroke, in pregnancy or postpartum, they appear to have been neglected. And many uh, specialists, rehabilitation specialists, might be in, the sh in my shoes, I mean, might be in the same situation I was in those years. And therefore, we, we really need to do something to get data available for um, this particular group. Sorry? So, um, that would require having competency statements, competency sets generated to help specialists in attending to the needs and to provide best possible care for this group. So what is needed at this time? When I started this presentation, I spoke about what we know now. There are many things we know now about stroke in pregnancy. We know about the incidence, we know about the pharmacologic care uh, interventions, we know about the surgical intervention. We know about secondary prevention. And many of this data came from, or some of these data came from just case reports, uh, case control studies, case series, many more from retrospective studies, just looking at the, the records, hospital records over a period of years, 
how were it managed, what was the outcome, and then from there, systematic reviews were done, meta-analysis were done. So we can start from case reports, case series, and it's interesting to know that many women that have suffered stroke in pregnancy even come out to tell their own stories. If you check the Heart and Stroke, found, uh, the Heart and stroke Canada, I found that um, organization, I found them to be uh, at the forefront, I, I consider them to be at the forefront of uh, getting so much awareness to a global audience, as it were, about the problem of stroking women. They are doing a very good job, by my estimation. And on their website, you will find them, you will find stories of women that have suffered stroke in pregnancy. They share their stories, their experience. There was one I read two years on after the stroke, the woman was still having physiotherapy and occupational therapy three times a week. So it shows that we are caring for them, but we are not making the data available to help for making out, I mean, helping out in creating guideline statements, competency statements, uh, providing evidence for what works and what does not. So we can start with case studies, uh, case reports, retrospective studies in a particular physiotherapy uh, facility, maybe 20 years, how many uh, uh, stroke in pregnancy cases were managed, how was it managed, what was the outcome. That would help. That would be a first step. And then we build on it. Yes, everybody appreciates that RCTs, randomized control trials, might not really be easy to be conducted among pregnant women. In fact, many RCTs exclude pregnant women. Exclusion criterion, uh, a major exclusion criterion for many RCTs for intervention, especially pharmacologic intervention, is pregnancy. They exclude them. But a case report, a case series, it's just a natural history, and they followed up and documented, and then we can build on that. Cohort studies, retrospective or prospective, case control, also rehabilitation practice guidelines. But the problem here is that you can't have practice guidelines without literature, without data, because you must base your recommendations on evidence. So it still boils down to the issue of research. If, the, if we have data from research, then we can go to the next step of having practice guidelines or even consensus statements. Also, competency sets must be developed and then outcome measures. As I said, the outcomes that are important to the pregnant woman might not just be tabbed by MRS. I mentioned the uh, Heart and Stroke Foundation they have a program, Time to See Red, also the American Heart Foundation, Go Red for Women. All of these programs, initiatives are geared towards creating awareness about the problem of stroking women and how that they are underserved, underrepresented in research, and something has to be done. So these are laudable initiatives in my estimation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Grace. Um, we uh, we really just have about time for one question, if anybody's got any sort of burning questions. Uh, we have the room booked after this. So does anyone have any? No. <clears throat> yes. Come here. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nobanjo. Um, I don't know if you are seeing me. This is Yinka. Hello, Yinka. <laughs> yeah, she she was my lecturer in school, back in the school. I don't know. Can you see me? <laughs> yes, I can. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you know, I was so happy when, you know, uh, when I saw that you'll be presenting uh, today. I actually thought you were going to be here, so... I had to rush down to, <laughs> so I never knew it's going to be through Skype. 
So I'm happy to see you. I'm here right in Canada. I'm doing my PhD. Um, my advisor happens to be here too, Dr. Ruth. <laughs> Proud of you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for your um, for your presentation. Um, even even though I came later, but um, I had uh, you been speaking about uh, you know. Uh, the, the scarcity of data on this uh, particular area of uh, research. And um, and one thing that just struck my mind was that, um, uh, do you think that um, this uh, could actually, you know, this scarcity of, or, or paucity of data on this area of research could actually be due to, you know, uh, the recorded uh, pre prevalence or incidence of, uh, of stroke uh, postpartum in, w in women? Do you think is actually related to that because of the maybe the low pre prevalence we w probably we could have in here in Canada, but in Nigeria I think we could have more in incidents. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Go ahead. Yes, please, please go yes, ahead. Yes, thank you, Inka. I stated that at the uh, uh, at the beginning of this presentation that in pregnancy and uh, the postpartum period is regarded as a rare uh, event but the incidence is increasing and then beyond that I have been able to show that other studies regarding other kind of interventions pharmacologic interventions surgical interventions they are they are available where the, the missing link is where the death is is with rehabilitation uh, research. So, yes, it is rare, but that should not be enough justification for uh, scarcity of data. So, I believe more can be done and we can start even with little, little steps, case reports, build up on that. But this is an important group of people. We cannot afford to neglect them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grace, and I appreciate your time today, and I'll be in touch with you after today's presentation. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for the invite.